Welcome to another episode of the Market Makers in Middle East and Africa podcast. Today is a special ep- episode dedicated to all the trailblazing women who are making a positive impact and making a world better place to live. I speak to a special guest, Her Excellency Dr. Maria Masoudi. She is the CEO of Securities and Commodities Authority in UAE and she is also the 13th most powerful business woman in the Middle East and Africa region uh, as recognized by Forbes. So Dr. Maryam, welcome to the podcast and it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you Abra for having me on your show. So Dr. Maryam, you are the CEO of the Securities and Commodities Authority, a very successful position and you had a very successful career. Can you please tell us about your early days when you graduated, when you started your first role, what you have learned so far and what are the things that brought you this far uh, it's always a pleasure you know and a passion to address the gen y and gen z of, uh, audience of uh, podcasts like yours um you see uh, everyone uh, you know the life of each of one of us is a, a complete story in itself so uh, as far as i'm concerned i was raised in a very close knit family and uh, my family were very you know was very strict when it comes to education and uh, we were always encouraged to study more and never skip school so i grew up uh, learning and you know understanding the importance of education and hard work and that paid off alhamdulillah in uh, graduating from uh, you know school and universities with distinction then continuing higher education was always my plan so when i have joined the, my second job i managed to obtain a partial scholarship from a shivning scholarship in the UK, in the uk so i was really happy you know i had a, a, a scholarship that will cover my tuition so and because of also my uh, excellent work record at that uh, time in my uh, previous em- employee i managed to obtain a special exemption so i would have like a paid Uh, study leave which i mean at that time my current my employee were i mean they did not have like policies to give such an exemption uh, obtaining my phd uh, in law from the uk was a big challenge because i had to i had to do that while um, you know having my responsibilities as deputy ceo at the ca and also being a mother of two so I had to travel back and forth until I obtained my degree and surprised my colleagues and families. Um I have not only passed this, you know, dedication uh, to and passion for my uh, for education to my kids, but also to my subordinate, subordinate and colleague at work because I want them to do what I have done and convince them to pursue their higher education. Lately, I have uh, managed to pursue uh, also uh, an AML, which is anti-money laundering, from an international diploma. It's an, from an international uh, compliance association in the UK. Uh, and also, you know, for me, education has no limits. So also I was uh, accredited uh, from uh, uh, Financial Action Task Force, FATF, uh, as the first Emirati woman to be accredited um, as an assessor, you know, of uh, AML CFT systems of other countries. So my contribution to the SCA since 2002 uh, in almost all departments of the SCA and also unflinching, you know, um, commitment to the SCA objectives uh, had uh, led me to this position as CEO. It has been sheer hard work and um, dedication, or, I mean, which helped me reach this position. Thank you for sharing this, uh, Dr. Maryam. It's quite uh, motivating and good to uh, hear this, that education and dedication can take you to a very higher uh, position and make you successful. Coming to another question, which is on the women empowerment. Uh, and as you are a prominent female leader in the region and in UAE, what advice would you give to young girls or young women who aspires to be in leadership position in you know traditionally male dominated uh, companies well in the uae we are blessed to have national leadership which outright supports women in all ways possible you know uh, the visionary leadership of the uae under the president his highness sheikh mohammed bin zaid al hayyan and vice president uh, the prime minister of uae uh, ruler of dubai his highness sheikh mohammed bin rashid al maktoum have comprehensive 
vision to empower women, either as mothers or wives, students, or uh, entrepreneurs or um, bus- uh, business women. You know, all this support has opened the door for um, them to participate in all you know um, fields of uh, culture, commerce, technology, as well as in public life. So this, I mean, of course, this all to contribute in nation building. Um, this is reflected in the constitution of the UAE Council of Ministers, which now has 10 uh, women cabinet ministers. Within this enabling environment, uh, I believe women need to demonstrate the best of their inherent talent and skills, and they will be able to shine. So UAE is a country where talent, skills, and endeavor are respected irrespective of gender. Uh, I would advise you know, young women to shed their inhibitions and upgrade and upskill themselves. And I can guarantee that uh, their career will grow. UAE now has opportunities in all areas of uh, development, from finance to industry to leading edge technology, manufacturing, industry, healthcare, and space technology. And uh, so, and today, Emirati women have been able to achieve their dreams and are present in all positions, uh, inst- institutions, and departments. Uh, I mean, they are they are becoming ministers, judges, entrepreneurs, diplomats, businesswomen, as well as executives. So, and the representative in, in international representative of the state and in international organization and institutions. So. Uh, they are a model now for other Arab women in reaching high positions, such as the, presi- uh, the president of the um, council, and uh, the parliament, uh, excuse me, and working in the field of space as well as area, other areas of modern era. So thank you for sharing this, uh, Dr. Marian. And uh, we have seen this, that UAE is a model and there is a lot of empowerment and we see very successful women in all the fields. Coming to another question, which is, We're talking about diversity and inclusion. How diversity and inclusion help the organization or how it impact in a betterment of the organization and their results? Well, various studies have confirmed that having a more gender diversified company management leads to better sale and revenues and also uh, increased profitability and market leadership. I will cite a few uh, studies. Let us consider, you know, the effect on um, profitability of companies. McKinsey, in its uh, delivering through diversity reports, found that companies that in the top most in the top twenty five percent for gender diversity in their executive teams were twenty one percent more likely to outperform their competitors on profitability. Similarly, a study by Ernest and Young revealed that a company made up of at least 30% women, female exec, uh, leaders, had 6% um, better profit margin than those that didn't. So all these studies, uh, you know, indicates that gender balance teams perform better than those that are not. The effects can be felt across all functions of a company. If an organization has an effective and, uh, you know, open-minded leader who manages the team well and, you know, creating an environment where talent will thrive and perform well, this will be translated into financial success. With regard to the SCA, uh, the SCA management is committed to achieving the vision and directives of our wise leadership in the country to support and encourage women in all, you know, fields. Uh, So, what we do at the CA, we encourage women to pursue their study and education. And also, uh, the SCA has provided all the ingredients to enable the female you know, uh, employees to make sustainable, positive impact. I mean, this is very good to know that it's not only promoting diversity and inclusion, but it's helpful for the companies to improve their performance and the results. Uh, coming to my other question, Dr. Maria, which is, on because this year themes of international women's day is choose to challenge 
what advice will you give to individuals and organization how they can challenge gender biases and how they can promote gender equity in their companies and in their daily lives well we can think of innovative ways to challenge gender biases and promote gender equality uh, like for example uh, in order to increase the women Uh, chances to enter the workforce uh, recruiters should ask the hr professionals um, to have longer list of uh, you know the, the, of candidates they did some s- research and found that um, adding an additional three candidates to an initial shortlist of three increase the uh, women to men ratio uh, from 1.6 on the original list to 1.4 on the extended one. Uh, gender pay gap is another issue to be addressed. A study found that um, in 2020, women worldwide earned 81 cent for every US dollar earned by men. So this 19% pay gap is appalling. Uh, also the uniform uh, assessment, you know, styles at employers, Uh, both at onboarding stage and also during continu- uh, you know uh, performance assessment also tends to enhance gender gaps a different type of suggestion but uh, which i think will go long way is enhancing women to uh, participation in the workforce by letting uh, women mentor men because with that we uh, in- can generate more empathy and cooperation Uh, for the Emirati women, now this is speaking worldwide, uh, for the Emirati women, they enjoy generous patronage from our wise leadership, which is, you know, keen on gender diversity by ensuring that women enjoy the same rights uh, and opportunities as men in all fields. So from education and uh, work. And I can proudly proudly say that women in the UAE here, uh, I mean, the reality experienced by women in the UAE exceeds their dreams. At the global level, there are still calls for em- the empowerment of women, while in the UAE, substantial work, you know, has actually been done towards um, achieving you know, the equality. So there is no doubt that success is closely related to both uh, confidence and competence. So, and, you know, the most important thing is to enhance confidence. It's not thinking excessively and taking action. I believe some of the obstacle here for women is, uh, not here, I mean worldwide, is that women think too much and they don't take the chance. You see, I'm just uh, encouraging women to please uh, Uh, enhance your confidence and competence and by paying attention to your education continuing education perseverance and insisting on success so dr mariam as you mentioned uae has made significant progress in women's empowerment and equality what advice will you give to ceo as an organization to promote it more you know for you know international movements or for here in uae or across the region Well, uh, as I said, gender diversity uh, um, has benefits not only for businesses and companies, but also for the wider economy. As previously said uh, and confirmed by various studies that, you know, more gender uh, gender diversified teams leads to better sales and revenues and uh, increased profitability and market leadership. I recommend that CEOs strive to make the work environment inclusive and, you know, diversified and balanced uh, because people are different by nature. So we are complementing each other. Um, there also there are studies, I mean, speaking about more studies that um, show that women have qualities that make them succeed in work, you know, uh, such as audacity. In times of uncertainty, there is a tendency to reduce, you know, risk as much as possible. But this will only, you know, uh, impact by having a decline in performance. So women always try to avoid mistake as much as possible. But at the same time, they are characterized by daring in making decisions and seeking uh, rewarding opportunities for their companies. 
to advance their ambition and you know their companies so they have an excellent ability to foresight the future and formulate you know the suitable uh, vision women are you know keen to build harmonious leadership among uh, the teams through a positive you know work environment and um, interaction with each other so i believe i mean uh, when the companies hear about all this I believe they will go more for you know gender diversified teams. Yeah, I think this is very interesting and very beneficial for all the companies. So my next question Dr. Maryam is on some of the challenges that women face in the workplace. So in your opinion what are the challenges women face in the workplace uh, and can you please share those? The issue topmost in my mind is that of work life balance. Women's uh, commitment to the family more often if not is the reason for them to leave formal work uh, generating more fl- flexibility in working hours nowadays working from home or you know uh, having virtual interactions seems to be a good remedy which can enhance work life balance a uk insurance company once i ad- uh, advertised all its vacancies with the options of part uh, time job share or flexible uh, working it was it witnessed a 16 percent increase of uh, in women applying to its to its job so you say that if uh, uh, companies when they hire if they can give these options yes women will tend to apply more and once the pool is higher then more women can be part of the yes. workplace now coming to generic leadership uh, you know it's not uh, 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 con- coming to gender leadership, uh, Dr. Mariam, one of the things that we want to learn from you is, as you have been quite successful, what are the things that makes an effective leader and how someone can develop this over time or nurture them? Well, I believe clear and uh, effective communication is the topmost quality required in a leader. Communication is important because it boosts morale. Uh, engagement, um, productivity, and satisfaction. Uh, so communication is also key for better team collaboration and cooperation. Uh, ultimately, effective workplace communication helps drive better results for individuals, teams, and governments. You know, to take it a step further, specifically as a leader, building good communication skills have has profound short and long-term benefits for organization. An effective communicator is able to motivate uh, his team and also to get more result. So this will also, of course, will there will be fewer misunderstanding. So effective communication can contribute to the organization's success and to his own or to his or her own satisfaction as a leader. So, Your Excellency, uh, another question which is on the work-life balance. How do you manage your personal life commitment with the kids and the family and then our demand of a very senior position? So how you manage and what advice will you give to women and normal people, you know, including men, how we can manage our work-life balance in a better way? Well, for women, work and family are you know, both important uh, and need to be delicately balanced. I have been able to manage work and family by uh, prioritizing one over the other, depending on uh, the criticality of my presence and inputs. So at times work take precedence and at other times I need to be there for my family. So my advice to, you know, women is the same, to strike your own individual balance between uh, between i mean your need to be there for your family and to be at work and dynamically prioritizing between the two roles you know true work life balance is uh, balancing your your energy too how do you see the growth opportunities in the financial market in the region and how do you see it it, it going forward well, I would say that the financial markets in the UAE have just begun their upward journey. They are poised to leap from here. Uh, so far, we had conventional you know, markets trading in plain vanilla equity products. Now, the markets are diversifying across services and products. Uh, 
the sophistication of financial services is growing. The product range is expanding. We have now ETFs, uh, derivatives, CFDs on international markets, all are being offered here in the UAE. We are focusing on developing uh, an onshore asset management industry. We already had Sukuk issue and onshore, uh, and uh, we will move toward improving also uh, debt offerings, as well as regulating uh, virtual assets for investment purposes. So, uh, and technology will be leveraged as well. So I see a bright future, you know, for the UAE financial market. Yeah. Now, this is where my another question related to financial market, the Securities and Commodities Authority of UAE. What is the big vision and what does the Securities and Commodities Authority aspire to do? The mandate of the Securities and Commodities Authority, the SCA, is to develop the financial market and at the same time to educate and protect the investor communities, as it is the case for all you know, regulators worldwide. Uh, taken from your question, I believe that both things can be achieved simul- simultaneously. One leads to the other, meaning sustainable financial markets will help in developing uh, the economy in a sustainable you know, way and therefore contribute to the growth of the economy. So there, these twin objectives will be guide uh, will be guiding the drafting of new laws and regulations, uh, as well as it. Th- this, of course, will help shape the uh, UAE financial market with focus on areas such as asset management, market upgrade, utilizing fintech, focusing on virtual assets, uh, in order to uh, to enable finding solutions to drive the way towards you know digital transformation with our financial markets. Do you see UAE becoming a financial hub or the Wall Street for the region? Well, nature has blessed you know, the UAE with a unique benefits in terms of location. Being the connected node between the East and the West, we have successfully gained from uh, you know, this advantage and developed a trade-based economy and uh, thriving trade hubs. Now, as the world moves toward you know digital integration, we will use our you know the learned lesson from our journey to become the digital hub uh, for the world by building the needed digital you know infrastructure for coming decades. So the facilitation for this will be our financial markets. We are already upgrading the UAE's markets with latest products, technologies, and rules and regulations. And with this financial um, uh, infrastructure and framework, we will be able to attract global financial institutions and investors and create world-class financial markets. Also, uh, in order to become the financial market of the Middle East, Africa, and South uh, Asia, the UAE has made leaps and bounds in all gla- in all global indicators in the fields of competitiveness, which is evident in the annual reports of global competitiveness, as well as according to the Global Financial Center's index uh, worldwide. So indeed, the ranks of the UAE have improved in the global competitiveness, as I said, reports, and the annual indicators of the global reports include the growing competitiveness of the country and its ability to keep pace with, you know, large countries and developed global economies and to join the list of the top 10 countries. So despite the fact that the UAE is a young country, it has proven its ability to adopt the most prominent international uh, best practices and standards in and standards in governance in all sectors, from enabling the economy and developing it to supporting innovation. So the coming years will open doors to unprecedented opportunities, steady growth, and you know, great development, inshallah. Corporate governance is very important. Health of the financial market is very important. As a regulator, what comes to your mind when you hear about the FTX uh, fraud or the scandal that happened? Uh, Unfortunately, the FTX fraud was a big tectonic shift. It changed the view of investors towards the emerging blockchain-based digital economy. This has been a paradigm change for the markets, 
with the rise of Bitcoins and other digital coins becoming some trillion dollar market capitalization, investor has started to cast doubt on conventional economy. The FTX debacle has shown that the financial prudential principles still hold ground. Decentralization, you know, to an extent is good, but control lying in the hands of the biggest stakeholders of the ecosystem creates, you know, conflict of interest. The FTX episode also uh, highlighted the importance of uh, appropriate controls and audits over, you know, all inter- all enterprises. This was as much a failure of FTX exchange as it was failure of governance and uh, controls, which should have been exercised over, you know, a financial institution, which operations reach the size and, you know, the value of FTX. So with regard to the SCA, it lays great importance and emphasis on the fitness and propriety of licensed entities and their controlling partners or persons by doing full uh, due diligence and implement strong ongoing governance and controls. So to safeguard, you know, our investor community and and their interest, we learn from this crisis that if the oversight is not strong enough and and if it's not enough, these frauds will happen. So there is a need to set some rules if we find that there is still some weakness. So my another question is, how is SCA and other institution shaping the future of financial market and what are the benefits for the companies in the region and in UAE to list in, uh, in UAE? So listing companies had a multitude benefits, not only for you know the stakeholders in the company, but for the whole economy. Procurement of capital is just one uh, of the visible benefits there are a multiple or a multitude of unseen uh, the benefits which come uh, which a company can gain by listing listing attracts global investors many of which bring global expertise and governance principles to the boardroom through investor uh, representation also the disclosure regime of markets enhances the transparency elements of corporates investor scrutiny will not let the management conceal financial numbers. Quarterly result disclosure keeps the management on its toes in terms of showing quarter on quarter, you know, um, performance and growth. They need to declare future projections to show the trajectory of growth and they are held accountable for their statements. So owners and managers of unlisted entities just need to look at the successful and sustainable, you know, businesses in the world. Most of them, they are listed companies. So realizing the benefits, they should approach ADX or or DFM for their respective uh, application request. We are at the CA as well as the markets uh, are already to welcome them and guide them towards unlocking the true benefits of their businesses. Cool, thank you. Uh, we were discussing about corporate corporate governance and the importance of it to run the public listed companies efficiently and then to develop healthy financial markets. What does SCA does to make sure that highest standards of corporate governance are followed at public listed companies? Well, corporate governance is described in very simple and nice terms as good corporate governance is all about being proper and prosper. So the essence of good corporate governance is proper corporate conduct, which uh, lead to the result, which is prosperity. Prosperity and growth for all stakeholders in the process, the company, you know, the owner, minority shareholders, creditor, suppliers, customer, invest, investors, and with them, the regulators also prosper, you know, because they will achieve their objectives. But, you know, this is easier said than done. Um, strong corporate governance demands high level of commitments from the directors strong oversight, rigorous audits, control over risk and tactful tactful management of um, conflicts of interest. So 
the SCA, the SCA for its part, took this lead early on in 2007. Uh, it issued uh, its uh, corporate governance guide as you know a strategic objective over all companies and establishment operating in the country to establish um, institutional discipline and enhance transparency. And later, this was enhanced in 2014, uh, according uh, to the guidance issued by the IOSCO and um, OECD. The world is now focused on uh, the effects of climate change, which has encouraged the corporate world to take notice and concentrate on ESG, environment, social, and governance factors uh, when evaluating corporate performance. So sustainability is becoming very important across the globe. How do you see the discussion of sustainability going on the boards or various executive level in various companies in the in the UAE? Well, one of the main priorities of the SCA is to develop sustainable capital markets in the UAE. In this regard, and in alignment with the UAE national vision of uh, 2021, the SCA published its master plan for, of sustainable capital markets, aiming to achieve the right balance between the social and economic development. Since then, the SCA continues to work uh, with other reg local regulators, exchanges, government, and private sector ent uh, entities to establish a harmonized framework for sustainable finance in the UAE. Covering all relevant areas such as disclosure, taxonomy, and governance. So to this end, uh, as part of the UAE Sustainable Finance Working Group, the SCA has is issued two high-level statements. So the SCA has also issued a revised corporate governance guide for public uh, listed companies in the year 2020, which contained several sections focusing on uh, sustainability and ESG factors, along with a circular to listed companies in, 2000, in 2021, um, giving them guidance related to sustainability and ESG reporting. The circular set out in more detail the required contents of these reports and a confirmation that such reports uh, must be published annually. In addition, listed companies uh, would be required to either issue sustainability reports along their financial reports or to integrate them, uh, meaning to have them into their annual report. So it's called an integrated report. Yeah, I mean, this is a very important step to make sure that we have a sustainable development and companies disclose it. So this is quite impressive. My last question, Your Excellency, and it's about you. What are the good things of being a CEO? Well, the best part of being a CEO is that you get to implement the strategy, which is most appropriate and suitable for the institution's growth and future. The sense of independence as a CEO also carries with it the feeling of contributing your best to your country. And at the same time, it also provides an, an opportunity to nurture good talent and reward good work. Of course, this comes with a um, tremendous amount of responsibility and accountability to all stakeholders, as well as to fu the full SCA board, which is always comprised of very high level, senior and you know, pro, um, experienced professionals. I'm fortunate to have a very eminent SCA board, including His Excellency, the chairman, to guide me and the future growth of the SCA. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. It was a pleasure to talk to you and thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts with the listeners. Thank you very much for having me, Abraham. Thank you.